Hey guys, Redneck Computer Geek, and today we're doing a follow-up video on one of my most controversial videos I ever posted on Facebook. When I posted up the rust repair video using this primer rust and this Rust-Oleum paint in order to fix up my frame on my Ranger, it went ballistic on Facebook and YouTube with people telling me it would never work, it was a waste of time, and that me spending a grand total of $80 or so was never even going to last a single winter, let alone ongoing winters. So, we're two years later, I'm in underneath here in order to do a fuel filter because I just did the fuel pump, so I figure we'll do a follow-up on whether investing to do this was worth it. There was also a frame repair in that video that was a little bit controversial as far as what the internet thought, and we'll make sure to take a look at that also. So, let's get started. Now, to put this into perspective, I would like to point out that these are Dorman Springs that are only a year old, and as you can see, the factory paint has been absolutely obliterated off of them. Here's the other side. The salt and corrosion off of the main roads has utterly obliterated them. But if you look at this, the Rust-Oleum paint is still here for the most part, next to this one-year-old part. Now our first frame repair is right in here. As you can see, the splice and everything is all sealed up with the Rust-Oleum, perfectly fine. That takes quite a beating from mud and grime, so that needs to be repainted two years later. That seam weld there is perfectly fine. Everything's holding together. Just for those who want to go and argue and complain, we'll check the outside of it too. As you can see, Rust-Oleum is holding together perfectly fine in one of the most abusive sections. Now, there is a spot that had to be slightly repainted, and I actually covered this in the video. In the video, I noted that the rust converter that was along this area, when I went to spray it, was not quite dried off entirely, and I should have given it more time. That ended up actually being absolutely correct, and as you can see, I went back later and I spray painted it with this horrifying silver because I wanted to mark the area. Now on the outside you can see that from the splash from the front tire coming up through you can see that it ate into that section there which is normal and then you can see where the splash zone backs off. Over here on the other side we should find the same exact thing. You'll see that right from the tire, you have your splash zone. It'll come back through, and then back here where it's not getting impacted, the Rust-Oleum is still perfectly fine. So I need to redo that section, no big deal. And I'll probably go back through with the needle scaler and needle scale everything. While I was at it, I also Rust-Oleum painted the entire bottom of the cab after washing it and rinsing it, and that definitely helped out. I do have one spot that I have noted, if I come around to here, and this is a known Ford Ranger problem, is this spot right here, if I can get the light to focus. Right here I have a crack that has gone through in the frame, and this is a noted problem with these Ford Rangers. It's not uncommon whatsoever to see a Ford Ranger with a piece coming from here to here that has been welded in and then welded on this seam in order to bind this back together, which is probably what I will end up doing. Now these are always rusted out where the hanger is and that one definitely needs to be replaced. But luckily, because I have a flatbed with just boards on it and stuff up above, I can pull that out and I can redo that easily. Now, if we follow the exhaust up through, we're going to come to the controversy point. The controversy point is right there where I patched the frame. Right there is my frame patch I put in with my cheap little Fournay welder. As you can see, it is solid. 
The Rust-Oleum has held even with the heat issue right here. And this is a known failure location for these frames. And if I reach up above it, everybody told me up above it would rot. That is perfectly fine. And what I do is every spring I take an air hose and I put it in these and I blow out everything down through. And then I take a sprayer and I load the sprayer full of some of that and I stuff it into those holes and I spray it full of that rust protector. And that usually does the job. Now, if we come to the front of the unit right here, this is a spot that has been resprayed. That's why I use silver to make it obvious. For some reason, this ends up getting nicked and messed up and everything. And these are known to be rusted out on like 10 year old trucks, let alone one that's pushing into its 20s. If we come around to the front, let me spin around here. If we come around to the front, this is the two year old paint doing perfectly fine. Does it need a refresh? Yes. Is it perfectly fine other than needing a refresh? Yes. Now let's come around. And as you can see, you know, the rust eats into the wheel wells here. That needs to be resprayed. This is just regular good old fashioned AutoZone bed liner spray. And I didn't scuff the paint enough, so it has chunks where it didn't quite hold. You can see her coming off. So I need to re-scuff it and redo it. But there's our frame rail. After two years. And the side that takes the most abuse in a main winter. So, does my furball assistant and my non-furball assistant need to help me with redoing it this year? Sure. Is it going to cost the same $90 to do that it did two years ago? Probably not, and it'll be a lot faster. My bet would be that it'll probably take about two cans worth of full coverage in order to be able to do what needs to be redone, and I'm betting probably what's left over of the original rust converter will probably work for the areas that have to be sprayed down. Hi, right. feel free to controversy this video too. Have a good day. Say bye-bye. Bye! -bye. bye.